So I'm going to read a piece uh, that is called Sex Ed, and every word is true. <laughs> when my son was nine years old, a family friend gave him, why do our bodies stop growing? Questions about human anatomy answered by the Natural History Museum. The illustrated book was a big hit filled with the occasional half-goofy question like, is it true that you can eat an apple standing on your head, or is the skull one big bone? On page 88, Ben found question 132, the loaded one, which asked, when do I stop being a child? Beneath that were three paragraphs on puberty, including a sentence that got his attention. Quote, body changes in adolescence turn girls into young women who can have babies and boys into young men who can make women pregnant. That there was a connection between boys and babies had apparently never occurred to Ben. How, he asked, incredulous, do men make women pregnant? I, the evolved parent at child rearing sacred crossroads said, um, let's go ask daddy. <laughs> and then, to prove it was science rather than cowardice, added, he's a doctor. <laughs> Daddy was watching TV. I repeated Ben's question. My husband said in a voice I didn't hear very often, therapeutic, pedagogical, well, sure, I can answer that. Do you want to sit down? And truly, Planned Parenthood could have videotaped his presentation and distributed it the penis, the vagina, the sperm, the egg, logically, oh, oh sorry, um, logically, calmly, no smirking. Ben listened and didn't interrupt. When Bob finished, Ben asked, not coyly, but suspiciously, how does the seed get in there? Remote control? Bob said no. The man puts his penis into the woman's vagina. After a few moments of contemplation, Ben asked, do you have to get naked to do this? Ben said, Bob said, yes, you did. Did you and Mom get naked? Bob said, I believe we did. Our son stood up, exited the room, and yelled from the kitchen, I'm never doing that. We waited for his return and his follow-up questions. I said, that was excellent. You couldn't have done better. We'll see, said Bob. A few days later, at the kitchen table, Ben asked me as casually as he could, without looking up from his breakfast, how do girls get pregnant? I said, Ben, you remember, Daddy told you the whole story two nights ago. <clears throat> his tone changed to one of weary tolerance, as if I were the one who needed the refresher. Yeah, yeah, I know. The man takes a seed out of his tush, and the woman eats it. Well, why not? Oh, hi. I'm reading this essay. Um, I'm reading this essay. It's called Sex Ed, so nonfiction. It's about my um, son asking about how, how to, how to, yes, how do men make women pregnant? Um, <laughs> well, why not? He had a, its own charm, and I was learning something valuable. One shouldn't push the facts of life too early. I'd like to think I corrected his misapprehension on the spot, but I don't remember doing so nor do I remember his coming to us for more sex education. School took the next step, a unit named Human Growth and Development, formerly known as Human Growth and Change, amended after someone, this was a lab school at Smith College, worried that the word change would, could traumatize. The boys and girls were separated for the classes. The boys got, I swear, Mr. Wiener, an experience of the boys and girls, um, yes, got, boys got, I swear, Mr. Wiener, an experienced and married sixth grade teacher. Fifth grade proved to be good timing, developmentally, because Ben would study his vocabulary list without snickering. Again, Bob did the quizzing. Balva, I heard him ask evenly from the other room, to which Ben would answer equally clinically, the external genital organs of the female. Vas deferens, the main duck that carries semen, our ten-year-old answered, as matter-of-factly as if the topic were Cotton Gin and Eli Whitney. <laughs> the vocabulary was in place, though not always the idiom. A few months later, he reported to his father that he had seen two Smith students outside Davis Hall, quote, doing foreplay. 
<laughs> I asked your friend with a doc with oh wait, I'm gonna skip that part. Okay. Section two of human growth and development was co ed. A year later, in the spring of sixth grade, I asked Ben how that was going, boys and girls together. It was fine, he said, his tone implying, why wouldn't it be? I asked how his friend Nathaniel was coping with this mature subject matter, because I knew from Nathaniel's mother that he still believed in the tooth fairy and Santa Claus. Ben answered as if venting a class-wide scorn over Nathaniel's reproductive IQ. Nathaniel, he didn't even know what PMS was. <laughs> Seventh grade brought a new school and mid-year, a new unit called Simply Health. Ben announced it at breakfast, sighing and saying, we start health today. A pause and a wry smile. I was his best audience and he knew it. Third year in a row I learned about fallopian tubes. He was an old hand. The teacher told me later that when Ben presented his special project on conjoined twins featuring Chang and Eng, Barnum's famous act, he informed the class that both men had married. Pause, shake of the head, then don't even ask about the honeymoon. He's grown up now with his own place, a fruitful social life, and good sense. I'd like to thank Bob and Mr. Weiner, the playground, his bunkmates at camp, the locker room, the internet, and especially the talking transparent woman at Boston's Museum of Science. It's an important job, and I couldn't have done it alone. <laughs> <laughs>